Anderson. What's going on you guys? Welcome back to channel Anderson. Today we're gonna to be diving in again a little bit further to the C36. Got a couple things on the agenda for this video. Uh, number one, we're gonna get the car jacked up uh, so we can take a look at kind of the front underbelly and I'm gonna to try to remove the front bumper A because it's misaligned over on the right side anyways and uh, it's supposed to have basically like a little kind of clamshell clamp or whatever you want to call it that you attach the front side of the bumper on uh, on each side and then the front is just held on by four bolts um, up here which we'll get to but yeah, the right side is just sagging, so I need to inspect to see like if it is just not attached correctly or if there's something broken on the clip or something. You see right here, I discovered by poking around that the fog light wires are basically just not connected to anything um, on this side as well. A couple of little tidbits to start off with a positive note. Um, I did check out the wiring harness and confirmed Right here, I don't think you guys would be able to see that at all. Okay, right about there, you can kind of see. Uh, it says 04 right there on that circle on the top part of what we're looking at. So that is the date code for the main engine harness. Now the other thing I need to look at is there are two other harnesses that I should be concerned about. One is the lower harness, which I think this is it. I'm not quite sure on this car. I would assume this is it because this is the main harness right here. And then also the throttle body harness, which I believe is actually not over here. I believe it's... Uh, where did I see? I just saw it the other day when I was looking around. Oh, it's right here. So the throttle body harness is right here. This connects directly to the throttle body. And those three things were the known biodegradable um, harnesses that they used back in, you know, 93 to 95, I think, for Mercedes. So a lot of cars suffered from this. And uh, the E420, matter of fact, you guys have seen me do the video on the throttle body rebuild. And I also did the lower harness rebuild when we did the manual swap. So this car is also in that date range so thankfully the upper harness has been replaced that's a big one and kind of an expensive one to try to find uh, if you go aftermarket i would have rebuilt it myself if i needed to but i'm glad i don't have to um, all the wiring looks really good on it and uh, the other ones we need to make sure though is the lower harness bad if it is those are usually pretty simple um, and on a inline six compared to the v8 one that i did i bet it's even more simple than the v8 one so um, throttle body and lower harness we'll look into at a later date but for now we've got other things to tackle i want to get this bumper off once i do that i can kind of inspect furthermore what's going on with the fog lights um, i'm going to jack the front of the car up so i can get the front wheels off anyways because we're going to need to take some measurements on the brakes to see which rotors we have and yeah, just kind of digging into it, but I wanted to give you guys a little update pre-jumping uh, into things. So popping this thing open since uh, this is exciting news for the channel as well. I don't think I mentioned this in the video yet, but I've never had my own floor jack. <laughs> I've literally been using mics for like the last 12 years on all the cars I've been working on. Uh, so I finally got one the other day from Harbor Freight and picked up a couple more jack stands to pair along with the other two that I already had. So we can get all the cars on all fours whenever we need to. I got some shifter work I want to do to this thing soon anyway, so yeah, we'll be using these quite a bit. Oh, and one other thing as well, we took out the old Clifford alarm system and I uh, traced back the wires to the bottom of the fuse panel and actually it's kind of cool. This is another kind of telltale sign that whoever was working on this car was, you know, careful about leaving details behind. They labeled, uh, you know, fuse 10 is where they installed kind of the... Uh, it looks like the power wire for the alarm and it in in fact it was there so they were accurate the only problem is if you guys have worked on these things before i don't know if you guys have a trick of getting the fuse panel all the way up like i can lift it out of here and it seems like there's enough play in the wires to actually pull all the way out so i can flip it at least a little bit to get to them but i just couldn't do it even with taking out those relays in the back and getting enough play to like it feels like it can go, but it just doesn't. So if you guys have a trick for that, 
let me know. Um, I wasn't able to do it and I don't want to just snip off those wires and leave them kind of like exposed in there. So my plan for now is probably to just cap these off and leave them kind of tucked because like I said, I don't, I'm not sure uh, how to get that out of there. So if you guys know how to get that fuse panel up and uh, all the way up so I can properly work on it, then let me know. All right, guys, decided to pull the lower belly pan first. Let's see what things look like. I'll get it jacked up, obviously, but first initial look. Uh, don't mind the wetness over there. It's uh, quite drippy from the washer tank. And you can see, actually, that lower control arm, I bet, has been getting dripped on for a long time because over there totally corrosion free over there that thing has got a ton of surface corrosion on it so we'll be addressing that for sure but uh, luckily it's just the kind of control arm assembly it's not any part of the frame or anything like that but uh, uh, looks a little crunchy so, let's keep progressing on and uh, see what we find. All right guys, procrastination as always, but Jack is put together. And uh, one other good thing for now, I just popped the uh, cap off of, I believe this is for the lower harness. Um, that's what it looks like on the E420. So I'm assuming that's what it is. And the wiring actually looks really good. So. That's another good sign. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to track down a date code anywhere on this one. I'll have to look up again to see if there is a way. But yeah, just popping this little cap off. And uh, you can tell pretty quickly how things are looking. So I'll go ahead and pop this back on and we'll continue moving on. Sidetracked as always. All right, and one more. Sorry, but <laughs> probably not going to be able to see it on camera. But I'm trying to see the throttle body. It looks worn off. There's supposed to be next to that 04, if you can see it in the bottom right corner. There's supposed to be a month and a year, but it looks like it's either dirty or worn off. Let me try to wipe it with my fingers and I'll tell you if I see anything, but. All right guys, from what I can see, I don't think you'll be able to, but it looks like it says 95 and then month 05. So, most likely the throttle body is original, which means I can rebuild that. But if the main harness and the lower harness were good, that would be awesome. The throttle body is definitely tedious. All of them are tedious, but um, you know, I've done it before, so I have some experience now. So that would be kind of cool to take care of on this car as well. But let's get into the job that I came here to do. Trying to get the bumper off, got the little grill piece out. The four bolts that I was talking about, um, there's one up here, one up here, and then one right there. Same thing on this side, one over there. All right guys, well, good news and bad news. Bad news, my jack does not make it to the uh, subframe where I need to jack it up from because it's interfering with the sway bar. So the car basically probably have to drive it up on uh, pieces of two by four or something. Uh, the good news, I've been staring here this whole time and I hadn't noticed, but the car is on, looks like Bilstein B8s most likely, and uh, Ibox Springs. I don't know if the Ibox Springs were factory on this or not, but uh, the Bilsteins look to be upgraded, so that makes sense why the suspension felt pretty good. Uh, I do think that the ball joints most likely probably need to be done because uh, I can feel a little bit of clunking. Unless it's the brakes grabbing, it could be the brakes grabbing, honestly, with the condition that the front brakes are in. So we'll see once we pop everything off, but ah, kind of sad. Might have to figure out another jack spot or jack it up from the side, I guess, but I don't really want to do that. I'd rather just do it in one go. 
Let's see if I can figure something out. That drips, by the way, is just the washer fluid that I spilled a massive amount of earlier. All right, guys, well, it's late. Uh, I'm not gonna pull the cart out and try to figure out two by, two by four situation right now. So I'm gonna see if I can just get this bumper off without uh, having to lift the car up right now. Cause uh, yeah, I wanna get it off and start inspecting things. All right guys, I got three of them off. One more to go. It's funny because uh, this is actually like really one of the first big Benz projects I did. Back on my first W202, I had a 90, 99 CG30 compressor and it had the uh, gray trim around the edges of the bumpers and the you know side paneling and rear bumper. And I didn't like it, it was a black car and I wanted to make it like the AMGs have, like the Sport lines had. So I took it off and I basically painted the chrome trim and the gray uh, to black. So yeah very old memories of taking off the bumpers in my parents driveway spending a week or so in the summer painting it didn't know what i was doing it still actually ended up coming out pretty good but i can probably do it better nowadays Last one off. Don't be alarmed, but uh, <laughs> the pieces are starting to fall. Uh, yeah, bumper came off like you guys saw, but the fog light on this side is still attached, thankfully. So to get to that, I mean, good luck. I guess you could fit your hands in there if you have small hands, but mine could not really fit in order to get this plug properly. So the plug is right there. I'll get that off in a second. In order to get the air box out, you got to take off this top connecting piece first it's like you know just like the classic mercedes nice kind of ram air into the intake box and there is this relay setup that attaches right here to the side of it now it attaches with a little screw on here but in order to get to that screw you got to take this relay out and to get that relay out it's very hard as you can see my hands all cut up and scraped i was trying but in the end it's better to just pop out the intake box I'm gonna throw some silicone spray onto these when I put it back in because that thing was stuck in there. So the whole area needs a cleaning anyways. The filter needs a cleaning. So you know what? This car deserves the love. It treated us so well on the 800 mile plus trip home. I love this car and I want it to get the best. So that's why we're doing this. We're gonna get it back into shape. That's really the goal, like what I have in mind. I just want it to get back into proper shape. And from there, we can start thinking about, you know, some little modifications and bigger modifications down the road. But right now, we gotta do this type of stuff. We gotta get it situated and settled and sorted. So I'm glad to be doing it. Glad to be doing it. All right, guys, I'm calling it quits here in a little bit for the night, but a couple things to note. I'm trying to figure out wiring wise. Um, so, number one, here's kind of the relay that controls, looks like the fog lights, and I'm assuming the uh, headlight uh, washers, and I don't know, something else to do with that. Now, here's the thing. This green line, that definitely looks like a rodent had gotten into it, or it was just being scraped up against something long enough, uh, is connected here. It's a single wire and that connects into the bottom of that relay. That same green wire is the one that I found detached over here. Um, and it's detached off of the bottom of this. So, cool. But I can't find where 
what should be, unless it's, oh, okay, good, all right. It was just lodged in there. We still have the plug on this side, that's good. So, we have the female plug. We just don't have the male plug for the fog light. So I'll need to source one of those or I can just make my own connector. Uh, what is this one for? Do not know. I'll have to trace that back. I'm assuming it's for the uh, washer as well. We'll see. My wife is calling. That means it's bedtime. See you in the morning, guys. All right, one other thing before I go inside, guys, before I forget. This is why the bumper was hanging loose on this side. This bracket was loose. Just tightened it up. There's two bolts, uh, or nuts rather, that hold it on to 10 millimeters. So just tighten that up, match it up with the other side. So hopefully it'll line good. And if not, we can loosen them up a little bit, get it aligned, and then tighten them down. This is so funny, man. This is literally the first big project I did back on my first W202. And it's like kind of all coming back to me of when I was putting everything back together just how it all went and uh, what I had to do. It's real funny, man, full circle for sure. Let me know what you guys think, by the way. Should I keep these things? I really don't like them. They're not like my thing at all. And that's one thing originality wise that I wouldn't really care to get rid of. So what do you guys think? Should I keep them or should I not? Oh my God, giant moth. <laughs> Anyways, gotta shut the grass. Time to go to bed. All right guys, well it is not the morning, but it is the next day. It's actually the next night. Uh, I've been working away a little bit on the C36 still. Wanted to update you guys with some progress before I kind of jump further. But what I've done so far is uh, rewired the fog lights. I just used that little connector kit you guys just saw. So put a female uh, on this side, or I guess technically it's the male side. I don't know what, I don't know actually. <laughs> this is the one that plugs into that side, but this is kind of the female terminal side, even though it's the male connector side. So I don't know what that's called, but anyways, match these up uh, for the fog lights. There's gray and pink on the actual fog light side and the gray connects to the white and there's white and brown that connects uh, on this connector. So that connector plugs into the gray relay kind of tucked down there. I also had to patch up this wire, I uh, put a butt connector on that side, and then I'm going to put a single connector over to this side. Uh, and I need to cut out some of this wiring because we definitely had some rodents um, chewing through things, as you can see. Unless this was just like chafing on something, I guess it's possible, but I don't know, it looks more rodent style to me and uh knowing that it probably sat at the auction yard for a little bit it's very 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 possible that uh you know had some critters exploring and seeing what was edible uh other things washer tank still leaked after i replaced the grommet evidence so i robbed the <laughs> A uh, little motor out of my E420 because they're the same ones. Connector top is a little bit different, but the connector still works. So now we got no leaks. I just haven't installed it back because I was letting that area dry down there. And then I sprayed it with some WD-40 and stuff to uh, kind of keep any water from uh, collecting on there in the future. So yeah, we're just plugging away at it. Um, once I get this last black wire connected, then I'll clean things up on the front bumper. I'll probably spray some uh, corrosion uh, inhibitor, and then we will line the bumper back up and get it mounted. And then from there, uh, you guys will probably see next tomorrow at work, I'm gonna try to build some like plank ramps so that I can at least get a couple inches of clearance in order to get the jack underneath. So tomorrow during the daylight, hopefully when I go home from work, I'll be able to lift the garage up, back the car out a little bit, put the planks down, have some room to actually pump the jack because, yeah, not much space right there. So um, little by little, we're just chugging away. That's the moral of the story right now, but I'm excited. We're close to getting the bumper back on. Just going to take care of this last little bit of wiring. 
And for those that haven't done these little connectors, I don't know what you call these style. They're, I don't know if they're Deutsch connectors or not, but anyways, uh, basically there's the female prong, or what am I talking about? There's the male prong, and there's the female prong, or terminal, I guess you wanna call them. And then you put over these little yellow grommets, you slide them over, and then slide them into whatever side, like this side with the uh, red little pin there hole is the one for this style. So you slide it through the circular side and that lets the little yellow waterproof grommet wedge in there and always pay attention to which side has the little uh, notch in it because they catch on those little notches in the prong itself and then they get locked in and you got a connector. So pretty simple. I've had this kit for a while and it's kind of my first chance to use it. So cool to be able to use something. You can buy that connector. Uh, the part number was 012545 uh, something, 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 54508 or something like that. I can't remember, but you can find them. Uh, but I just didn't want to wait five days for it to get here. I'd rather just do my own and call it good. So let's make this last one and get going. All right, guys. Last connector is done, right here, so this will connect. I'm pretty sure this is just connecting the two relays together. I don't see what else it would be doing. It's just running from one side of the relay to the other, or one relay to the other from the front bumper. So uh, it has quite a bit of slack, so that's good. Um, and plus with the connection, it'll just make it easy in case I need to separate the two halves for whatever reason um, at any point. So I'll tuck this up here nicely, maybe zip tie it with uh, something else here, just keep it just like so. And uh, yeah, next step, let's clean up all of this. There's not, I mean, this isn't terrible, but I can uh, clean this up a bit and uh, put some corrosion inhibitor on it. And we'll go ahead and test fit our bumper. Oh, and one other loose wiring connection. <laughs> Pretty sure I figured out why our temp sensor is uh, all over the place. I believe this is what this was. There's no connector on this side, but it's hanging in the right kind of location where you know a temp sensor temp sensor would typically be. So that's what I'm assuming that is. Um, so I'll have to get another one. But uh, yeah, for now, got to kind of move forward so this one is to be continued all right guys a little bash bar already looks a lot better just hit it with a little brake clean and a rag now we're going to use a little corrosion inhibitor love this stuff it smells fantastic and it works fantastic more importantly been using this on all the cars in any spots like this where i don't really feel like painting but uh it's very durable lasts for a long long time i'm pretty sure That'll stay on there, no problem, uh, pretty much forever since it's sitting behind the bumper especially. So coat that up and then we'll mount the bumper back, get our things plugged in. I'll try to leave that temp sensor wire somewhere where it's easy to access so that when I get a temp sensor, I can hopefully wire that back up. So let's go for it. All right, and that stuff pretty much goes on kind of clearish yellow. You can see kind of the color of it right there. It's got a little yellow hint to it, but on dark metal like this, hard to tell. On the lighter stuff, you can see it. it smells like surf wax, it smells delicious. So uh, let this cure for a few minutes and throw the bumper on.
Hmm. Alright guys, well, can't get this side to lock in. I can't remember um, if these are supposed to sit underneath the fender, or I mean under behind the bumper, or if they sit out like this, I really can't remember, to be honest. Kind of feels like they're getting in the way. Um, maybe they are supposed to be, but this side clicked on fine. So, I'm not really sure. I guess I gotta keep messing around with it. Oops. Yeah, I really don't know. Uh, when I tighten up the side, like when I, I'm going to tighten that up, I'm sure it's going to hold fine, but I would like to get this to clip in here if I can. All right, well guys, uh, partial success. I haven't tied down the bumper yet because I wanted to test if we have fog lights and we do have one. <laughs> oh, we got two. Yes. Yes. I guess the relay just had to kick in. I didn't have the relay plugged in on this side. Hell yeah. Sick, man. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. All right. That is all plugged in, wired up. We are good. I'm gonna get this bumper fastened. I couldn't get this side to lock. I was trying, it's just not happening. So I'll have to remember the W202 hacks, I guess, for why or how to get that to lock in place if they're being stubborn. I feel like I remember that exact same thing happening on my old compressor when I was putting the bumper back on. And I figured out something to, to fix it, but I, I just can't remember right now. So I'll just tighten up the bumper brackets, get it as flush as I can. I mean, it's already a thousand times better than what it was. And this is not even fully compressed yet with the bolts tightened. There's no bolts on it right now. So dude, that is awesome. Got fog lights working. Can't wait to get this thing back out. We did a ton of little fixes already. Dude, I'm stoked on this. All right. Okay. Get all this plugged back in and uh, I need to cap these off and then we're good. Let's see, uh, shut the car off and keep going. All right guys, she is back. Take that, you little rats. <laughs> or whoever you were. Gerbils, mice, hamsters, capybaras, something. But uh, yeah, man, I'm boss. I'm, I'm super excited. Got our fog lights working. Bumper is much better aligned, not perfect, but a lot better than before. Next up, need to uh, get those ramps so we can get this thing up off the ground, pull the wheels off, measure the brakes. We will keep churning away. I will catch you guys on the next part of the video. One last thing, guys. I'm so grateful I have a garage. Like, I've been able to come out here every night for the past three, four nights and just plug away for a couple hours. Uh, number one, it's a great like decompress activity for me. And number two, it's just super exciting to be able to like actually make progress or feel like I'm making progress on the cars. Man, what a blessing. What's going on you guys? The next day, next night, got the garage open. It's a little bit chilly tonight, so I'm bundled up. I'm definitely gonna have to get a uh, space heater in here once it gets like actual winter time, it just got kind of cold out of nowhere right now. It's been warm the last few days, but today uh, I made a couple ramps out of some scrap wood at work. Um, I just need to get lifted up, hopefully about that much to be able to squeeze the jack underneath. Uh, but I do need to roll the car back a bit and then drive it up onto the ramp so I got some room to actually pump the jack. Otherwise we're stranded anyways, so. Uh, I am going to finish this out right now, just kind of cleaning things up underneath and we'll get a look at what size uh, brake orders we have and etc. And then I'll close out the video. A couple things that I have ordered so far. Uh, I did order a water pump, found a really good deal on one and uh, it is the correct version. This does not have the oil cooler on it, so I was able to verify. The oil cooler ones basically have a line um, underneath that connects, but it's a different design. So anyways, my car doesn't have it. It's an early model. So it's before the engine number where they changed that. So 
I was able to find one for like 44 bucks shipped and it's from a good brand so we will uh, do that in a later video for sure. I also bought door seals. Now I know I'm not the biggest fan of Euro parts to be honest but I figure with something like door seals you could probably get away with it and these things were literally like an eighth of the cost of brand new ones from Mercedes. They were like $12 a piece so I couldn't really pass it up. It was too good of a deal to say no to. I got three of them here and then one more showing up on Tuesday. It shipped separately somehow so uh, those will be going on soon. I'm going to have to do that outside in the light because you really need to open the doors all the way and I don't feel like doing that in the dark. So besides that I think we've got quite a bit done in this video which is cool. We got the fog lights working. We got all the wire repaired. We got that uh, old alarm system cut out and disabled and plugged off. Other thing we got, washer tank, got that thing solved. It's holding fine. It's got, you know, just a little bit left in it now. Unfortunately, we lost a ton of fluid, but that's okay. Uh, things have dried out as well. Uh, got the air, uh, air filter cleaned out a little bit. I vacuumed up the box as well. Yeah, we're chugging away. I'm really excited to get the valve cover done. I will get that done probably soon because it's bugging me and it's not that hard to do. So I might as well just get it done, get it out of the way. But uh, yeah, for now, let me go through this process real quick. I'm going to roll it back, get it up onto these, hopefully, no problem. And then uh, hopefully have enough room to get the jack underneath and start uh, our process here. All right, let's go ahead and start this thing up, get it moved back. And, uh, try to get into a good spot where I can still close the garage and have room to work. Test our lights again. Nice. All right, you guys, looks like we got some success. Got it up there, no problem. And it uh, looks like we got plenty of room to get the jack underneath now. It won't hit the slave bar anymore. So let's go ahead and get to it. Shut this thing off and uh, see what we can do. Alright guys, Jack is in good position. Starting to lift it up now. One thing cool about this car, did never have a front license plate drilled out, which is awesome, because I never run a front plate. Don't really have to in Washington, I've never gotten in trouble for it. I think it is technically required, but I always just run a rear plate and I haven't gotten yelled at yet. So anyways, we get this thing lifted up. All right, guys, we've officially jacked up our first car in the garage. So on jack stands now, keep the jacket in the middle because we don't really need to get underneath there anyways, but I'll go ahead and give everything a quick look. Obviously, you can tell this thing, like I said, was getting dripped on probably for a long time from that freaking re leaking washer fluid tank. Um, the other one is totally dry and hardly any corrosion at all. This side, yeah, it was just getting hit with that stuff. So luckily, it's just all a bunch of surface stuff. Still feels plenty solid, obviously. So I will uh, scrub that thing down and we'll get some spray on it. But for now, uh, everything down here, definitely got a little leakage. Hard to tell where that's coming from exactly. But we'll have to track it down. Seems like on the right side of the motor and it looks like it's just kind of collecting down here. It's definitely probably a slower leak if anything because it's not much down here. But I'll clean everything up and then that way we can keep a better eye on it. And we'll have a look at ball joints and all that type of stuff. Um, but yeah, so far, I mean, it's pretty good shape. B36, oh, this might be the original shocks i don't know what these came with if they came with bill steens or not but you guys let me know there's the light on there there's the part number b361854 guessing from b36 i would assume maybe that's a uh 36 brake line hey does it have stainless steel lines heck yeah 
Someone put stainless steel brake lines on this. That is sick. I was just thinking about buying some of those yesterday because I know we we're going to do the brakes. That is sick. All right. That's a good thing. What else this thing got? So anyways, yeah, the springs, by the way, Eibach 90427. I'll have to look up if those are stock or if those are aftermarket. But man, oh, that's awesome. Stainless steel brake lines. Deal. This car, I'm telling you guys, this car was loved. Somebody really took care of this thing. The original owner, obviously, because there wasn't really anybody else's hands besides that. Transmission looks dry. That's good to see. So, and the transmission fluid in it looks great. I looked at it on the dipstick, it looks fantastic. Nice and clear red. Um, and the car shifts great too, so. All right, well, anyway, so let's pull these wheels off, see exactly how bad these rotors are and uh, measure them out so we know we're ordering the correct ones and start on our next video, <coughs> which will be the Motorsport Hardware Lugware lug stud install. I'll make that into a separate video. So let me pull the wheels off, we'll inspect the brakes, and then we'll kind of close things out with the last kind of game plan. Bolts look decent, a little corroded, not too bad. All right, let's bring you guys in for the brakes. Yeah, let's get the light on this. Okay, <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see that, but the ridge on these brakes is insane. It's not good. So let me measure these out and then we'll know exactly what our rotor size is. These calipers are amazing, beautiful design. It looks like the uh, rear four pistons of later, kind of the front design of them. They are a Ate uh, brake or ATE. And look at that sick AMG stamping, not a sticker, stamping. I'm definitely going to respray these. All right, guys, sorry, GoPro died. We're playing camera shuffle, but I was saying uh, these front calipers are beautiful. I'm definitely going to repaint these. I'll probably uh, just clean them up and do a brush on paint, to be honest. Keep it simple. Uh, with the same uh, silver paint that I did the intake manifold on the C55. So that stuff holds up really well. I'll put the uh, kind of rust converter, kind of solid primer on it first with a brush. And then, yeah, it's good good to uh, do the paint on or brush on with the brake calipers because you can get in all the little crevices. And because their brake calipers are pretty porous, you don't need a perfect finish on them anyways. So... That'll be a nice little restoration on these soon. But let's measure these and then uh, start on our wheel stud video. All right, guys, in moving problems, <laughs> of all the things I can't find right now, I can't find a measuring tape. So I just cut out a piece of this old, uh, it's actually tennis grip tape, um, cut out a strip of it that I matched up to the size. So whenever I find my measuring tape, I can just measure this and we know the size of our rotors. That way I can continue, put our wheels back on and order everything I need to later. So it's gonna take some sorting through and uh, figuring out what parts to order, what to get. So just uh, stay patient and we'll keep making progress. But I'll go ahead and end it here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for all the supportive comments and just like the excitement you guys have been sharing for this car. Um, you guys are one and the same with me right now because I'm super excited to have this. I love this car. There's just something about the W202 that really has my heart and to have, in my opinion, like I've said, the most special version of the W202 and the C36. Truly blessed, man. I'm, I'm really, really, really excited and happy to have this thing. So we'll keep making progress on the next videos coming up. Thank you guys again. That said, though, I will catch you guys on the next one. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and until the next one, peace.